Michelle you know Nock is with us this morning, senior yeah. editor of Conservative Review. Hey, Michelle, great to see you. You too. What were you going to say? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just going to say they should have photoshopped the picture of her with her swilling with the beer mug. <laughs> I love yeah, that one. Right. Exactly. Uh, she got a standing ovation on Broadway yesterday when she was in the audience. That's a big shocker. Sure, what show did she go to? Uh, I don't know. It might have been Cats. Yeah. <laughs> we loved it. It was better than Cats. Okay. Yeah. Mike Pence gets a lecture. She gets a standing ovation. All right. Uh, let me ask you about this. You know, we know there's a mainstream media bias against generally conservatives. You've been talking about this for years. But the New York Times has compared President Trump to O.J. Simpson. They wrote this. The White House drama has begun to resemble a kind of O.J. Simpson trial for politics, gripping the nation and minting a menagerie of unlikely celebrities. What do you think? Is that fair? It's obnoxious and it's offensive. I'll tell you what is fair and appropriate about it, though. Um, I'm glad that these people are admitting that they are like circus clowns. I was in uh, L.A. Menagerie. in the 1990s, and uh, the idea that uh, these people have finally roused, woken up the sleeping beauties who were AWOL for the last eight years, finally energized. I love in, in that New York Times article how uh, they, they uh, quoted David Remnick of The New Yorker, saying that he feels like a 29-year-old again, starting his career anew, um, because, you know, there weren't enough scandals, blood-tainted scandals during uh, the last eight years of the Obama administration for them to, uh, to cover and wake up to. Disgusting. Right. Well, they, they, didn't they, really, they really didn't uncover any scandals. Was anybody really looking for scandals during the Obama years? I'm no, they, they weren't, which is why uh, I, I, it was a full employment uh, act for me over the last eight years. Not only did uh, culture of corruption come out within the first seven months uh, of the administration, but of course I could have written a, an entire encyclopedia series with all the columns that I did reporting on all of those scandals. A, a, and the whitewash that continues with these people pretending as if uh, the Obama administration, even if in its first 100 days, uh, wasn't a complete hot mess. Um, I, I did a column this week comparing the first hundred days of the Obama administration with Trump. The idea that, that it is unprecedented chaos, what's happening now. Where were these people in the first hundred days of, of Obama when there were four withdrawals of Obama nominees uh, based on everything from mm -hmm. tax problems uh, to national security problems? Obama had uh, nominated a national intelligence uh, head who right. was a Saudi-funded shill. <laughs> Where were they? <laughs> and Where were they? You had two major programs. You had the wow. stimulus package where there were no shovel-ready projects, which you later admitted. And you had Obamacare. Yep. You can keep your doctor and you can keep your plan. You couldn't do either. There just was no interest in following up the, the investigations of the IRS. He made that comment. I found out about news reports. I'm going to look into it. Nobody looked into it after that. And That's the right. Benghazi investigation and where That's it right. went was end up being a witch hunt. And you know what? The New York Times, which I call the fish wrap of record, was at the heart of this whitewash conspiracy. Steve Bannon is absolutely right. The media is the opposition party. I got to get that on a bumper sticker. All right, Michelle, let's talk about immigration because we had a report a few days ago showing the numbers and how many people that have been that have been deported from our country in the last week were actually criminals. It was 75% of them. But if you watch the mainstream media, they're talking about ripping families apart. There is an immigration lawyer, his name is Robert Colkin, who said that, uh, President, oh, that President Trump has a heart when it comes to children. This is what he wrote in the Daily Mail. President Trump in two weeks has already done more for unaccompanied refugee children than Obama did in two years. Democrats who are horrified at Trump could allow President Obama to act in the most unlawful way out of any president I have seen in my lifetime. Do you agree? Yeah, well, what Colgan is referring to is a memorandum that uh, deprioritizes the immediate deportation of unaccompanied minors. And that certainly goes against the open borders narrative that somehow Trump is this so-called fascist who's uh, doing everything he can to, to rip apart families, et cetera, et cetera. And the open borders lobby, of course, has been focusing on uh, the deportation of a young man who is, uh, according to ICE, a self uh, described gang member in mm -hmm. Seattle, um, and and this is to to point fingers at, at all of the deportations that are now going on of so-called DACA 
dreamers. Um, but it's interesting that even somebody within the immigration lawyers lobby uh, is trying to defend sure. um, President Trump. And I'm, I'm glad for that kind of fairness. You certainly don't get that in the open borders yeah. media. He, he said children are being put in the back of the line to be scheduled for uh, cases and they're putting everybody else up there. Therefore, he's showing compassion for the kids and families. Uh, that's not going to get out there. I think late, then later, after he secures the border and after he gets rid of the criminals, then we're going to deal with the people that are here and haven't violated any laws. We might sooner or later, little by little, get comprehensive immigration reform. Yeah, let me just make one more point, though, because you always hear this open borders platitude mm -hmm. about ripping families apart. And the bottom line fundamental question there, though, is whose responsibility is it for the families being ripped apart? There are parents who are making this conscious decision on the other side of the border, uh, either to send their kids yeah. over here and have us take care of them, or for them to come here illegally, then have those children. Who, who bears the burden of that? American taxpayers and the government or those parents themselves who put their own children at risk? Sure. Mm -hmm. Great point. Uh, also, we've been talking a lot about refugees, given the fact that uh, many from seven different nations, uh, as well, immigrants, you know, under the temporary travel ban, not allowed in the country. Now they are again. Well, when it comes to refugees, apparently there's a story out there that, uh, according to the United Nations, refugees can easily spend a third of their disposable income on staying connected. They want more free stuff. They want Wi Fi. They want connectivity, Phone stuff charges. like that, so that they can. They're refugees, but they got to they got to update their Facebook page. <laughs> That's right. Give me your poor, your tired, your yearning for a free Wi-Fi connection. <laughs> uh, and this is happening all over Europe, of course. And it, it is no joke. The billions of dollars that are now being spent on welfare in places like Sweden and Germany. And oh, poor Angela Merkel finally realizing, oops, shouldn't have done this. Should have taken care of our own people first. Um, and 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 it's not just happening in Europe. Of course, it's happening on our own shores where um, refugees when they come here have super high rates of uh, food stamp usage and uh, the problems that are inherent in um, in refugees who are exploiting their so-called political and economic persecution mm -hmm. status you've got refugees from Somalia who are in Europe who are using their welfare cash to go back to their home countries oh, yeah. that they claimed were persecuting them this is insanity right it so when do we see your next investigative piece <laughs> I've got uh, nine shows coming up on CRTV.com. In fact, one of them is on the refugee crisis uh, and, and a very uh, unfortunate um, phenomenon that a lot of people don't want to talk about, and that is the rape refugee crisis that's going oh, on in Europe. All right, and before you go, what do you make of what's going on with the feeding frenzy right now in Washington, D.C.? Started with the stuff, you know, the investigation into the Russian hack, which didn't happen. You know, they didn't impact the election, according to the FBI, supposedly. And now the Flynn fallout and the leakers and stuff like that. Yeah, well, there's a lot of squirrels, you know, squirrels that are distracting us from things that are really important. And with regard to leaks and national security, why aren't more people talking about the three Muslim brothers in the House Intelligence right. Democratic Committee uh, who IT were guys. involved, right? Who, who were involved in, in all sorts of undermining of, of national security? Don't mm -hmm. want to talk about that. Excellent point. Right. We'll try to cover it real soon. Thank you, Michelle. Michelle Malkin. Thank you, ma'am. You bet.